In today's episode of how to blow your account very quickly, not kidding, this is going to be a good one because we're going to go over the three worst day trading strategies that I have used over the years personally and have lost a ton of money. And these were mainly when I was in the beginning stages, like the first three years, and I was just trying to figure out what strategy to use, basically how to make money, how to become profitable. And I tried it all pretty much. And so yeah, now I have some wisdom to share with you guys on the worst day trading strategy strategies to avoid. Now, I do want to highlight that these might be successful for some of you guys. Like if you're commenting down below and be like, you're a liar, this totally works for me, that is completely awesome. But I'm just talking about the majority of traders. These are just most likely going to be very, very bad strategies. And I'll explain why. And then if you stick around, so I'm going to start with number three, number two, and then number one, ranking them on the ones that I lost the most money with for number one. And then at the end, I'm going to actually give you guys just a simple strategy you can use if you are falling into this trap and maybe you're using some of these strategies, you keep losing money and it's just not working for you. At the end, I will go over a basic strategy that I found success with in the beginning and I hope it will help you too. But with that being said, as always, let's dive right in. And I'm going to go over examples of each. So number three on this list is new high of day slash new low of day breakouts. And so basically what this strategy looks like, and we're going to use this day on SPY as an example just because this happened recently and so I can easily recall what was going on. Um, but there is a strategy that some people use where they look to trade the breakouts of either new high of day or new low of day. So that means basically if we are breaking high of day, they're looking to go long. Or if we're breaking low of day, they're looking to go short. And I tried this strategy for a few weeks and I failed miserably. And there's actually a very, very obvious reason. I mean, eight years later, it's pretty obvious to me, but it might not be to you if you're new. So just to highlight right off the bat the reason it typically does not work is because your risk versus reward is really really crappy like that's just the simplest way to put it and the way that you can calculate that is because if you're breaking new high of day then your risk level is going to be very very high unless you are having like a really tight stop loss for example so if you are risking low of day and you're trying to trade the break of new high of day, that's horrible risk versus reward, right? So that's pretty obvious. But some traders will be like, no, 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 like if I'm trading the break of high of day, then my stop loss is going to be maybe the candle at open, right? So if maybe you're using the opening candle as your stop loss. That's still pretty far-fetched when it comes to risk versus reward. So over time, I just could not find success with this strategy and it makes sense on the risk versus reward side of things why I couldn't find success is just because if you are trading one or the other your risk is going to be very very high most likely now it can work sometimes but we're talking longevity over time you know what's gonna work more times than not right because it's all about statistics and probabilities so on the flip side of that if you would have so some of you might be like well you know what if I took the break of this candle. So like some people will consider the first, like let's say five minute candle open and then they'll take the break of low of day off of that candle, which would be, what if you took right here? You see that wick? What if you didn't wait for confirmation and then you went short here, then got stopped out and then we went down. So there's just a ton of volatility in the first hour of the day. So if you are trying to trade new high of day or new low, low of day breaks off of those five minute candles, it's still really, really hard guys. So I just personally would recommend avoiding that, but if it works for you, cool. Let's move on. Number two is going to be high volatility gappers in pre-market. And so I have a great example to show you guys, but I lost so much money on this. I'm specifically talking about more on the penny stock side or the cheaper high volatility runners. I still trade those, but I have a much different way of trading those and strategy. And it's just quote unquote more safe versus what I used to do, which was chase the high volatility pre-market gappers and we're going to go use a recent example to show you why this is a really bad idea especially if you're new so to kick this off we're going to start off with looking at the top chart because the reason that we're going to go analyze this other one which is the one i'm going to use as an example is because basically it was a sympathy play to top so top went in absolutely just insane crazy short squeeze the most crazy short squeeze we have seen in a very long time, which gets me excited again because I think penny stocks will start to heat up and cheaper stocks 
will start to heat up. Just there are a ton that are beaten down. But again, that's a different topic. What I want to focus on is the fact that now traders are going to get FOMO very easily because they've seen this after hours action. I mean, heck, it went from $6 over here to $2.60. So of course, you're going to start to get FOMO when it comes to any type of potential sympathy play. And this is used to happen to me all the time. And I swear to you guys, it will most likely bite you in the you know what more than it will help you because yes if you would have traded top and broke the rules and like you know chased the pre-market or after hours runner you would have made really good money but nine times out of ten you're most likely going to miss the original move on the leader which was top and you're going to go try to trade something like a sympathy like we're going to use megl for the example on the high volatility runners and why it can be a bad idea and i have to delete some things just because i am potentially looking to trade this into next week but there are certain criteria that i'm looking for aside from that let's focus on what could have went wrong and so what i used to do way back in the day when i was only trading penny stocks because that's how i started out is i was looking for these high volatility runners to play them right but i was mainly finding that they were having these big moves up in pre-market market and then I was trying to trade them in pre-market. Now this can become a disaster for a few different reasons. It's really really difficult for you to properly manage your risk in pre-market versus the actual trading day. You typically have lower volume, there's a wider bid and ask, so if you're trying to size in and it goes against you, you are going to most likely lose more money way quicker. There's also the risk for things like offerings, right? And so these big gap ups in pre-market can present an awesome opportunity for a company that doesn't make a lot of money, hence most penny stocks, to drop an offering. So that's something to be aware of. But I would see this run up, and especially if I saw something like top back in the day, I would be really, really quick to start jumping in. And yes, you can get lucky and get small pieces of this move, but you've just got to be very, very careful and figure out a, a way and a strategy that works for you to trade these because again, Nine times out of 10, if you're going to chase in pre-market, you're most likely going to get caught in a trap a time or two, and it only takes a time or two, a big flush down, and you have cut your account in half. So when it comes to these big pre-market movers, me personally, I don't trade size pre-market or after hours. If I'm trading pre-market or after hours, it's just fun money, play money. I save my size for market open, and I also save it for dips. So I look for discounts on big volatility like this. I'm not out here at open buying and holding and hoping for the best because that is a horrible strategy, but I've done it. I will be 100% honest with you. I remember one of my first ever day trades. It was on a biotech stock. I think they're delisted now, but it had the same ordeal. It ran like six or seven dollars in pre-market and I was just buying even though it was up $6 and I was like, oh yeah, it's going to go to 15 for some reason. I just thought in my head that it was just going to keep going up and guess what? It didn't. And guess what? They dropped an offering the next day and yes, I lost a ton of money. So lesson learned on that and that is why I'm sharing with you guys. So one tip I do want to highlight though is mark out the levels from pre-market. So once we can see in pre-market where support is sitting, mark those levels out and then wait for your discount. I mean, look at that. We eventually will retrace to those support levels like we did Friday afternoon. And bringing home the cake for the number one way to have the worst day trading strategy and lose the most amount of money possible, I'm speaking from personal experience, is when, this is specifically for options, but it can kind of apply to also what we just talked about. So the buy and hold mentality coming in with that strategy, like let's just say that you're used to long-term investing and then you get into day trading and you've got the habit of trading from a perspective of, oh, I could just buy a bunch and hold and it'll just work out in the long run. If you come in with those strategy and mindset, you're going to get ruined very quickly, especially, I want to put like this in capital letters and I forgot to, especially if you're trading options. That is not something you want to do the buy and hold method with at all unless you just want theta to eat your premiums away and lose all your money. So let's go look at an example. Just because I already know this chart and I just went over this in a private lesson for the group, I'm going to use this as an example. This is also a trade that we took on Friday and I want to give you guys just a real life straight up example on how the buy and hold method can really destroy you, especially when it comes to options. So this is actually not as a dramatic example as something else I'll show you, but we can make it more dramatic in a second. So 
let's just say that you went short, right? Like you wanted to go short oil because oil had spiked up and you were like, I just think it's not going to hold. I think it's going to come back down. So this is where you originally went short. And you're like, I'm just going to hold a put position and I'm just going to see how it goes, right? And you're just crossing your fingers and hope, hoping for the best. Because you've done it in the past with other stocks. You've, you've bought something or you've shorted something and you just let it play out and it ended up eventually working in your favor. Hence, created very bad habits, right? And now you're coming into options and you're trying to do the same thing. And you don't really have a stop loss, you don't have risk management or anything like that, and it's just a dumpster fire, right? So these are the 62 calls, which is something that we were looking to play. You can see they started at 50 cents and they ended up doubling and going to a dollar. Now let's look at the flip side of this, and this is not um, zero DTEs. These are actually next week, so a little bit more time, but I am going to show you guys what zero DTEs looks like. So these went from $1.76 all the way to 85 that is a dramatic drop just in one day, guys. And so you have to understand when it comes to options, buying and holding because of theta will eat at your premiums, even if we're going sideways, right? So even if we dipped here, we went up and then we eventually came back down close to where you shorted, you're still going to be down dramatically due to theta. And if you would have been trading zero DTEs, let me see if I can get that chart up. So that would have been the 28th of April. Let me see if I can just work some magic and type this in. Now these are zero DTE, so these actually expired Friday. And so if you would have shorted right in here at 1045, let's go and trace it back. 1045 was right in here. So let's say that you took it short. You probably paid about, let's say $50 per contract, somewhere in here. Well, if you didn't take profits, those immediately, I'm saying immediately because it was a very short time period, it was like within an hour, went down to $12 per contract. So you basically lost almost, if not all of your money at that point because you were not able to react quickly. So the most money I've ever lost, honestly, trading over the years has been with options because I came from a buy and hold mentality when it came to stock trading. And that absolutely ruined me, especially because I like to trade with size. I like to trade heavy. And those were patterns that were created early on in my career, which I had to become very self-aware around in order to fix those mistakes when it came to options. So now with options, I do not hold for very long. I have very strict rules and I trade with small amounts of money. And it finally started to play out to where I wasn't creating dumpster fires every day with every trade I was making. Now let's also talk about a buy and hold perspective on, we can go back to MEGL. So this is another one where the buy and hold mentality can also hurt you. So it doesn't have to just be options, right? It can definitely be stocks, especially the high volatility runners, because this plays into the number two that we went over. And that is those high volatility runners. If you're just buying the hype, and you're just hoping that it continues up. It doesn't necessarily have to even be in pre-market, right? You could have bought this gap up right here and just were hoping that it was going to pull a top 2.0 and you had no stop. You stopped looking at your, let's just, this is something I used to do, right? Whenever I knew that I should set a stop loss but didn't, I would have this bad habit of just getting into a stock, saying F it, and then not looking at my phone all day and going to work and just saying, oh, it's going to be a, a positive surprise, you know, when I get back on my phone for my lunch break. Ha! Joke's on me. That was oftentimes a really bad surprise because, in fact, it ended up coming right back down. And I would be down a ton of money because I had that buy and hold mentality. If you're not buying at a discount, if you're not buying the dip before the hype, you need to have a set target and a set stop loss or trust me, you will lose a ton of money. And the whole point of this video is just to point out mistakes I've made over the years using bad strategy and hopefully you guys don't repeat the same mistakes that I made. So now lastly, to end this video on a more positive note, let's just go over super basic strategy you could start with, which is using basic trend lines. And I actually just decided to continue the trend line theory just because I just did a video on that not too long ago. It should be one to two videos back um, using SPY and ES. Basic trend lines can be more powerful than people realize, right? So let's just go look at how you can use them to your advantage. Now, don't get me wrong. There are more things involved, way more things, and you should eventually add to your edge, but this will just be a foundational piece.
So using the chart that we're already on, let's see what a trend line could look like. Typically about three hits on a trend line is about all you're going to get when it comes to a solid one. So if it's anything above three hits, then you're most likely, and we test it again, it most likely will break. But just a rough trend line is right here. You can see we have wicked below, but candle bodies were closing over. So a simple strategy could look like every time we retraced to this trend line, you could then buy in hopes that it would continue in an uptrend. Once the trend line broke, you eventually then stopped out and cut your position. So you can see we started the trend line here, moved all the way up, came back down, formed a higher low, which is a bullish sign at around 235, skyrocketed to $6, eventually made our way back down. And this was where the big three hit came from. So we formed a range between three to 340, skyrocketed one more time, almost to $6. And then when we came back down, you can see the bounces got way smaller, volume also dropped off, and then we eventually broke that trend. So at least with the trend line, you're seeing patterns with trend, right? You need to be trading with trend because trading against the trend is a more complicated just it's not as profitable especially if you're as a beginner there's specific ways that I sometimes will trade against the trend um, and it it can work but it's more advanced and it's just harder to grasp so in the beginning looking for something more along the lines of basic trend line bounces can be something to watch for or if you wanted to short it back to the trend line that's obviously something else you can do as well, but shorting is also more advanced. And again, I know I already have this on my chart because I went over this in detail for the month of May plan with the members. And I just wanted to show you one more example on SPY. You can see I drew a basic trend line, 40378, and it looks like 413 might be the next hit down. So drawing basic trend lines can just give you an idea of, okay, if we are coming back down, where should I look for support to be if I'm looking to buy? And that's just something very simple, right? It's super simple. And a lot of people might comment on this video and be like, that's almost too simple. But in reality, if you don't start with the simple stuff and you try to jump to the more advanced stuff, like playing those breakouts or the high volatility runners that we went over, you will eventually blow up your account because you have not created the foundational work required to become an advanced trader. And the strategies that I went over earlier, some people might find success with, but I can guarantee you they've probably been trading for a long time and they can practically work their way around any strategy. As always, I hope this was helpful and brought value to you. If you did find value, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And just really quick, I want to give you guys some more information. I do get a lot of questions about education and the membership. So if you want more value than the free stuff I give you guys on YouTube, I try my best to post as much free content as possible. I also try to post on my Instagram stories. So if you're not following me, my only account is linked in the description box down below. But if you want more of me on a weekly basis, in regards to my eight-week program, my day trading strategies, A to Z, options, futures, stocks, penny stocks, all that good stuff, make sure to check the description box down below for the master link that will hold all of this information on monthly membership. But if you just want the free stuff, that's completely cool. Like I said, just keep track of what I put on YouTube. I try to at least post one to two videos per week. And then that's pretty much a wrap. Just don't fall for scammers. Uh, in the comments down below, I do not have WhatsApp. Those are all spam bots. And then when it comes to Instagram, I'll never direct message you. Please do not fall for any scams. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next week.